Let's go ahead now and spend some time building the aggregate expenditure line. What we're going to do is we're going to take each component of aggregate expenditure and graph it so that way we can see when we come up with the entire aggregate expenditure function, the entire aggregate expenditure line that we'll use to find the macroeconomic equilibrium. We have a simple two-dimensional graph here. We're going to add in that 45 degree line like we just talked about so that way we know where these two uh, axes are equal. So our first step is always going to be to add that 45 degree line. So we're gonna add this 45 degree line. We know this is that 45 degree line. And we're going to graph real GDP on your horizontal axis versus aggregate expenditure on the vertical axis. So that's how we're going to start with this. Remember, anything along this line is where real GDP equals aggregate expenditure, and that's what we're looking at. So what we have to do is we have to think, well, what exactly is aggregate expenditure? From earlier in the lesson, you should know that aggregate expenditure is equal to consumption plus my planned investment plus government purchases plus net exports. And what we're going to introduce is all of these different components. We know the consumption function, we know that consumption is equal to C bar plus MPC Y minus T bar, where we have autonomous consumption and we have marginal propensity to consume. What we're going to assume is all of these other values don't depend on GDP that much, right? Consumption depends on GDP. So aggregate expenditure is going to depend on all of these but we're going to make the assumption that consumption is the only one that really depends on real GDP and changes. All of these then are just going to be numbers. We'll put a line over them to show that they're just a number and they do not depend on GDP, just like we have I autonomous consumption. So let's start each one of these. Let's start with consumption. What do I know consumption looks like? I know the consumption function is going to start at C bar, and it's going to be upward sloping with the slope of marginal propensity to consume. The thing we know about MPC is that it's less than one. Therefore, the slope's going to be flatter than this 45 degree line. We can then graph the consumption function to look like this. Here's my consumption function. But aggregate expenditure isn't just the consumption function. Aggregate expenditure is the consumption function plus other stuff. So let's take planned investment. Well, if I have planned investment here, it's just a number. So I just take this consumption and I add planned investment to it. Let's just say planned investment is going to be the difference between here and here. So what that tells me is that this is consumption plus planned investment. My autonomous consumption plus planned investment. And this is going to be parallel, and I have C plus planned investment. Hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. Next we care about government purchases. Well, the same exact thing. We have some level here that's going to have autonomous consumption, autonomous planned in <coughs> investment, and autonomous government purchases. Again, a parallel line, C plus PI plus G. Last but not least, we can go ahead and we can add in net exports. Now in the US, net exports is negative pretty much all the time, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Let's just assume it's positive so we can keep the same trend that we're doing. And so we have a line up here that's actually C bar plus PI bar plus G bar plus an X bar, and again, we see this parallel line where this is consumption, plus planned investment, plus government purchases, plus net exports. And what exactly is this right here? Well, this ends up being the overall aggregate expenditure line. This is equal to aggregate expenditure. Where it starts right here is that C bar plus PI bar, plus G bar, plus NX bar, we're going
going to label that A sub zero, and we're going to call that autonomous spending. It's the part of aggregate expenditure that does not depend on real GDP. We just add up all the different components of autonomous spending. Autonomous consumption, autonomous investment, autonomous government purchases, and autonomous net exports. So we're going to start at that point. We're going to see upward sloping. The slope of this line right here is going to be the same as the consumption function, which is marginal propensity to consume. So there's a ton of information here. Going forward, what we're going to do is we're only going to use this final line, which is aggregate expenditure. So that way we can identify the equilibrium. And we can also see that if we're out of equilibrium, how with the change in inventories do we move towards that equilibrium point?